Okay, let's just go ahead and get the obvious out of the way. I got new glasses, and I'm not sure how I feel about them. <laughs> I think what I was going for was kind of an Elton John meets Edna from The Incredibles, but I, <laughs> I just feel a little too cartoony. But that's not what's important. What's important is the scene we're going to be talking about in today's episode, and I'm talking an epic scene, an important scene, a scene that is bigger than my glasses. Okay, that's the last one, I promise. Fans of 80s action films, or actually just fans of action films in general, are well familiar with the iconic Terminator franchise. And while the series of films does have its ups and certainly its downs, there is definitely no shortage of iconic moments within these movies. The Terminator is like one of those franchises where every single person on the planet knows some kind of reference to that movie. Like, I don't think the term Asta La Vista baby will ever be the same again. And perhaps the most iconic line spoken by Arnold Schwarzenegger throughout the entire series is, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Yes! I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. We'll be back. But just remember one thing, I'll be back. Oh. So today we are gonna be taking a look at that scene from the first Terminator film and breaking down why it is so awesome and why it's so memeable in the zeitgeist. I'm Kier Gomes with Joe Blow Originals and you're watching Scene Breakdown. Let's go. 1984's The Terminator, written and directed by none other than legendary filmmaker James Cameron. And of course, it stars everyone's favorite action hero, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The Terminator is about a soldier who gets sent back in time from the year 2029 all the way to the early 80s in order to stop a killing machine cyborg from executing the Connors. Sarah Connor is a young woman who's pregnant with her son John Connor, who's also the key to the future's salvation. Man, this movie movie is insane, and it was actually more insane when James Cameron originally wrote it, if you can even imagine. So the villain of the piece is really the icon that is the Terminator, and that's Arnold Schwarzenegger, who also becomes the hero of the franchise from the second movie forward. But in this movie, he's just trying to find Sarah and stop her from having her baby. And the whole thing with him is that he is a full-on cyborg. He's not human, and he does not act human. Also really funny because he still has an Austrian accent. You're close. Give them to me, now. Even though this movie is seen as a completely iconic film today, as is the case with most of the movies we cover on this show, this movie was against all odds. James Cameron mentioned once that he came up with the idea for this movie while he was working on his previous movie, Piranha 2. The thought of getting from Piranha 2 to Terminator is legendary on its own. In fact, this movie, even while it was being made, was kind of a gamble. It was almost produced by Paramount, but they didn't even want James Cameron to direct it as they felt that he was unproven, which at the time he was. And during the filming of this movie, they had to employ all kinds of guerrilla filmmaking techniques because they didn't have permits for a lot of this stuff. They were just kind of run and gun. I think at one point they even had to tell somebody that they were doing a student film for UCLA just so that they could keep shooting the scene they were doing. I have to assume it was a scene that didn't include Arnold because why the hell would he be in a UCLA student film? And while we know James Cameron today as the visionary, innovative, insanely rich, money-making director, he was like living in his car at the time that he was writing this script. So if this movie didn't happen the way that it happened, we wouldn't have the James Cameron that we have today. All things that make it iconic, but let's get into the scene and see what it's really all about. Good night. Everybody's sweating. They're probably tired. I heard that the crew... I gotta pause it already. I heard that the crew on this movie had t-shirts made up that said things like, You can't scare me. I work for James Cameron. And if you guys know, James Cameron does have a reputation of being a pretty hard-ass director. I mean, you kind of, I guess, have to be to get that kind of result from your movies. People even on this set, when he was an unproven director, uh, were already, you know, they were being pushed to their limits to create this stuff. So, look at everybody sweating, probably because they're running around L.A. trying to film this at night. Arnold. You know, that was almost Mel Gibson. 
I was told that she's... I gotta pause it again. That was almost Mel Gibson who turned it down. And I think he said after he saw the movie, even though he was a big fan, he's happy that he turned it down because Arnold, I mean, just did such a good job. But it was also almost <clears throat> O.J. Simpson. I don't even know. Am I even allowed to say that name nope. <laughs> on this show? <laughs> they almost cast O.J. Simpson as the Terminator, which would have been okay. But get this. They didn't cast him because they felt that he was too nice to be taken seriously as a threatening murderer. But... <laughs> Now, before it was confirmed that O.J. Simpson is an actual monster, they did end up using his likeness in a Terminator comic book in, like, the late 80s. I think actually maybe 1990. So we almost got Mel Gibson. Then we almost got O.J. Simpson. And instead we got Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I think that's a good thing. Let me know if you agree. I was told that she's here. Could I see her, please? No, <clears throat> can't see her. She's Where is statement. she? Where is she? Look, it may take a while. Oh, Keep wait, in mind, he's supposed to be appearing human to everybody else. Like, they don't know that he's a cyborg, so his behavior is really weird. I'll be back. <sighs> there it is. Obviously, I'm going to have to pause it and talk about this line. You guys, you have heard, I'll be back. I mean, even if it wasn't a famous movie quote, it's a pretty common saying. But tell me that you have not personally said, I'll be back. And in one way, whether you thought it or said it out loud, you said it as Arnold. Everybody's done it. I do it all the time. Even if it's just in my head, I'll hear somebody say, I'll be back. And my first thought is, I'll be back. I do not think I'm crazy. I think that's most of us. But the line was actually written differently when Cameron wrote this. And th this is kind of a trend with iconic lines in movies. They're almost always something that was changed in the smallest way that took it from being a regular line to being something that's referenced 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 years later. The line was originally written as, I'll come back, which just doesn't have that same snappiness to it. You know, when you hear, I'll be back, there's like a, there's like a quick snappiness. I'll come back, same amount of syllables, does not sound as good. Also, there's this kind of like legend on the set that uh, James Cameron and Arnold butted heads a couple of times over dialogue, and one of the things that they butted heads the most over was that Arnold Schwarzenegger thought that saying I'll, like I apostrophe LL, was too, fe like it sounded too feminine for the character. And James Cameron thought it sounded perfect, so Arnold wanted it to be I will be back, or I will come back, which... It does sound more robotic, but it, it's supposed to sound like a cyborg, inhuman thing impersonating what they think a human would say. So I think the aisle actually sounds better, uh, but Cameron famously told Arnold, I don't tell you how to act, so don't tell me how to write. And they kept the line the way it was, which, again, I think it, it sounds better just the way it is. That's why it's so iconic. And maybe Cameron knew that. Maybe he knew that those small little changes were going to make this something really memorable to the movie. I don't know. Let's get into the good stuff, though. <laughs> now, Arnold said that he studied uh, Ewell Brainer's uh, performance as a robot in uh, the 70s Westworld movie. Look at that. Practical. Practical, they did this. Beautiful 80s hairdo, right? Maybe that's what I should do next. <laughs> so good the coffee cup explodes in his hand. Now, I could really imagine this being Mel Gibson after seeing him like Mad Max, you know? But like, I mean, Arnold is so iconic in this role. Seeing him like this is kind of how I picture him in my head, you know? And this was really his big break starring role, you know. I mean, he had he had stuff before this, but this was a huge deal for him. That's really the Terminator vision. Now, the, I don't know if you guys knew this. The Terminator vision, what they're showing here, uh, you know, where you see it's all red and it's got the code. That's actual um, Apple II code. So if you happen to have like an Apple II computer... I don't know why you would, but if you happen to have an old 1980s Apple II, uh, this code, I guess if you like put it in, it, it'll it'll generate Terminator Vision. I've heard that anyway. Obviously, I cannot test that. I don't have an Apple II, 
Uh, but if you know, let let us know. You know, I just think that's a really interesting thing if that's true. But it is actual code. I know that. Man. <laughs> Everything from just, I mean, just the rawness of this movie and knowing that they were, they were kind of scrappy making this movie makes it even better, you know? That's good hair, too. I think, I, I'm not 100% sure if it was the whole cast, but I think also, uh, supposedly Arnold avoided most of the cast, or at least the ones that he had a lot of scenes with. Uh, because he didn't want to have any connection to them. He wanted to feel completely disconnected. And I think that that really works. It sounds like an extreme method acting thing, and some people think it's kind of pretentious, and maybe it is, I don't know. But I I kind of get that. There is a coldness to him that you, you, you would want, you know? Oh, the cinematography is so good, too. I think this is, you know, obviously the, the 4K transfer. The color grading is a little bit different. Uh, it's very blue in here, but it looks good still. Uh, but I have heard that the 4K for Terminator 2 uh, is a little too saturated in blue. So let me know if that's true also. Oh, it's so good. With the orange popping out behind him. A lot of steady cam, you know. Can you believe Paramount did not want Cameron to direct this? Who knows what this movie would have looked like with somebody else directing it? I wonder. Oh, it's so good. Just the, the shadow. The cinematography here. I also heard that in Poland, when this movie was released, they changed the name of it to The Electronic Murderer. <laughs> and I heard that they did that because... Uh, in Polish, there is a word for, like, Terminator is a word in Polish, but it means, like, student or apprentice or something like that. And so, uh, when this movie was released, originally they, they called it the Electronic Murderer. Could you imagine if it was called that here? Would you have wanted to see it if it was? Maybe, I don't know. It sounds a little goofy to me. Man, this is such a good scene. Like, all the smoke and the fog and the dust. Just, I love the vibe of this movie. Oh, so good. So good. And that is pretty much it. Now, one of the things that I think is really fun to mention is that while the I'll Be Back line is probably one of the most iconic, the pool of iconic lines from Arnold Schwarzenegger in the first movie is pretty small because in the entire movie he only has 14 lines which is even less than he had as Conan the Barbarian before this movie that is not that much so when you can make an impact like this one and a few other ones within this movie off of only having 14 lines it means that you were right for the role you're able to take that dialogue that was written not specific to you and make it something memorable for years to come. And that, I think, is what really makes this scene and that line so iconic. Well, guys, I love The Terminator. I love a lot of these movies. Let me know what your favorite Terminator film is down below. I think mine is still T2 Judgment Day. Also, please feel free to comment with any other iconic movie scenes that you would love to see us break down here on the show. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this video if you have friends that are fans of this kind of content. And don't forget to say something nice about my glasses in the comments. Thank you again for watching, and I'll be back.